education um, and just excited to talk with you today. Hey, me as well. You know, I actually believe Tammy Gordon might have a uh, 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 you in, a, in, <laughs> in the live light here. So should, I'll be harassing her soon enough. I should have guessed. She's, uh -huh. uh, that's wonderful. I'll have to be sure to thank her. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so, you know, honestly, uh, this is actually our very first DD Fire. Um, we have done a lot of different web events over the past several years between actually being Digital District, Social Media Club, but this year we're really focusing on kind of expanding that. And in fact, I have a little spiel, so I'm going to go with that too. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, you know, for everyone that's just starting to join in, um, and I think we'll probably get a little bit of a slower, uh, this will of course be recorded and we'll be able to have this available as well. Um, you know, for those of you who are unfamiliar with Digital District, we are a nonprofit. We are based out of DC. I have recently moved to Charleston, so I will actually be announcing a new DC specific organizer who will be putting on the events and happy hours and all the fun stuff that you all love down there mm -hmm. or up there. Um, you know, so with that said, uh, I'd like to introduce you to our awesome uh, uh, speaker for the day, uh, Anastasia. Uh, if you would be so kind as to just give us a little bit of a uh, bit about your background and where you currently work. Um, well, thank you so much for having me. I'm delighted to be here today. Uh, currently, I am the Chief Marketing Officer for the Human Rights Campaign. We are the country's largest organization dedicated to lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender equality. Um, and we like to say that we work on everything from um, all the issues that affect an LGBT person's life from birth to death. So your ability, you know, um, to be married now, which you can in all 50 states, um, uh, ensure that you're not hired from your job for who you who you are, who you love, um, you know, uh, not being discriminated against in, in at a hospital setting, um, the ability to adopt children, you know, all of the things within the life cycle that um, most people, ex you know, don't have to deal with those um, kind of issues, but because you know, historically, the LGBT community um, has been discriminated against, and there were laws um, across the country um, that don't address the basic needs um, of the community, and the Human Rights Campaign works to fight on all of those issues. So I have been here for um, 10 years, um, which is hard to believe, but um, I like to say that um, it's hard to leave when you're winning, um, and certainly we've seen incredible victories and success, um, you know, particularly in the last five years. So it's mm -hmm. been a really exciting time for the movement. Um, and before that, I um, spent six years um, doing environmental work at the organization Greenpeace. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's really where I, I cut my teeth, so to speak, on how to be an effective communicator, how to think creatively, um, and, um, you know, how to communicate in a way that really resonates with people. Um, so I've always had, um, you know, a, a strong social justice, a strong progressive value system. And um, I've been fortunate to be able to work for places like Greenpeace and the Human Rights Campaign that allows me to bring my talents to bear on issues that I really care about. Very cool, that's very interesting. And in fact, we'll dig into your background in just a minute as well. Uh, I just wanted to let folks know that are watching, if you would like to ask a specific question, feel free to use the hashtag DDFire um, you can also use Blab if you're using this particular system, and there's a Q&A feature on here. Uh, we will make sure that we can get to as many questions as possible. I also have a set of questions here where we will uh, be kind of digging into your background, some of the things that you are interested in uh, the marketing world, and really kind of how you kind of got into these particular shoes. Um, but with that said, again, just folks, feel free to use the hashtag DDFire. Um, and let's get on with the show. So, you know, kind of one of the first things that jump out after, you know, doing a little bit of a Google stalking on your name, <laughs> um, you know, it was bound to be as a necessity, but, you know, you really maybe created one of the most successful campaigns uh, that went absolutely viral on Facebook. Um, and it focused on obviously, you know, your current role. Um, you know, 
maybe you'd like to jump into just a little bit about that. And, you know, I also found a really great video, uh, I think it was from The Guardian, where you kind of dug into the details, but maybe you'd like to kind of uh, highlight some of that campaign. Sure, I'd love to. Um, well, I think um, probably one of um, my proudest moments um, as a communicator and, and certainly working on digital um, was the Red Logo campaign in support of marriage equality. You can see it behind my shoulder. Um, we, in um, 2012, in December of 2012, we heard that the Supreme Court was going to take on not one, but two historic cases. Um, a challenge to Proposition 8, which banned uh, same-sex couples from being legally married in California and also um, a challenge to the Defense of Marriage Act, which um, that act um, barred legally same-sex married couples from receiving the same rights and responsibilities and benefits that heterosexual couples receive under federal law, of which there were more than a thousand. Um, so this was really historic. And it came on the the wind of the election in 2012, which we were proud to uh, reelect a pro-equality president, but also we won um, for the first time in the movement's history on the ballot in four states um, on the issue of marriage. And so it really felt like um, the wind was at our back. And so we at the Human Rights Campaign developed a really aggressive strategy to help continue that drumbeat um, around marriage, leading into the oral arguments of those two cases. Um, and the work that I did with my team was really building a um, intense uh, digital strategy that was very scripted um, for weeks and weeks leading up to that event. And I often say that, um, you know, if you don't, if you don't make it a big deal to your audience, like they're not going to know. So we really every single day had um, a prescriptive strategy that said, you know, at nine o'clock, at 11 o'clock, at one o'clock, at three o'clock, like how are we continuing this dialogue uh, around marriage and really elevating these cases um, to be appreciated for the historic nature that they were. So as part of that, I had this idea um, to take our iconic blue and yellow logo um, and tint it red, which for us was the color of love and really what you know, the cases symbolized at their core. And I think uh, there are a couple things that were really key to the success around this. So the first was um, that we didn't ask anyone, like <laughs> we just did it. And I think that, um, you know, I think if we had asked, I don't know how people would have felt about it because, you know, the first rule of branding is that you don't mess with your logo. Mm -hmm. So that was we just did it. And then we seeded it with a lot of people who were digital influencers that um, uh, that had sort of a, a, a large footprint. So like George Takei, who's a good friend of ours, um, he posted it and encouraged his people, his followers to do the same. Sure. And um, I'll never forget that that night I went to bed and, you know, you check um, social media, you check your email and you go yeah. to bed, everything seemed fine. And I had a really early morning press event. Um, so I was up at like 3.30 the next morning to get ready for my day. And I woke up to just like a stream of email that was like, your site has crashed. <laughs> and it was like, I can't even tell, I like, I, mm -hmm. I still like remember that moment. It was so horrible. And I was just like, fuck <laughs> what is happening because i you know i'm just like i'm sleep you know deprived and right. tired and i'm thinking my main communications vehicle has crashed like what's happening right and so i'm in like crisis mode so i go to my press event i go to the supreme court i end up going back to the office and i'm just like it's craziness um mm -hmm. And someone just sort of, um, my husband had said, like, you need to go on Facebook and see what's happening. And I was like, I don't have time. Like, I'm in <laughs> crisis. Um, and um, my uh, colleagues just sort of started popping up their head. And they're like, you need to go and, like, look to see what's happening. And I think I had seen, you know, I did log on eventually and saw what so many people had seen was just their entire feed was just a sea of red logos. You couldn't even tell who was who anymore. And I have to say, I mean, it was like, you know, having gone from like probably what I thought was, you know, one of the most stressful 
um, per, you know, professional experiences of my life to just sort of the other end of it. I mean, it was just like, it was amazing to see not just my network, but like so many other people's network, you know, wanting to show their support. And that was really the goal of it is like, you know, not everyone can go to the Supreme Court and, you know, stand outside with a sign. It's how do you show your support? And I think um, increasingly the conversations, the ways of sort of demonstrating your values are not just happening offline, but the, the digital world has become the place for those those things. And we certainly saw that with the red logo. Um, probably one of my favorite stories that happened um, as part of that, though, was I called Facebook and said, mm -hmm. um, you know, you guys have to give me some like numbers, like the press are asking me and I need mm -hmm. something to give them. And they were like, we don't know what's going on. We thought you could tell us. <laughs> so, right. <laughs> it was like, I think it took all of us by surprise, just the sheer level of it. And, you know, the incredible outpouring of support. And I really do believe to this day that that moment was, you know, not only said, um, for what so many people felt like, yes, they support marriage equality, but that moment really changed hearts and minds. And, you know, when your entire friend group or network um, is saying something and affirming something, you know, if you're a person that's LGBT, a young person living in a very isolated place, that is incredibly affirming. And I think that's the piece that I'm most proud of is that, you know, we gave hope um, to a lot of people that um, maybe didn't feel supported or loved or valued for who they were. And I think that that was just such a beautiful demonstration of, you know, what what's possible online and how um, the work that so many of us do every day can really change, um, change lives. Yeah, it's yeah. amazing. And correct me if I'm wrong, but um, did this campaign actually come out before Facebook implemented that system where they kind of give you the resources to change yeah. the overlay? Yep. They did it again. And um, so they did it in 2015 in June when the Supreme Court announced its historic decision that, um, you know, now allowed for marriage across um, all all uh, at all states. But I think the real issue um, at that time for Facebook was that they didn't actually want to have people changing their their profile pictures to non photos. Mm -hmm. And so I think, um, you know, it helped strike a conversation there internally. But I think it was just it was just a beautiful conversation to witness um, happening across that specific platform. And, you know, we were active in other platforms, Twitter, and, um, uh, Tumblr. But I think that was, you know, Facebook was the main portal to have that that conversation. Very cool. Um, so, I mean, it kind of sounds like, you know, they might have even built that resource as a result <laughs> of the campaign. Yes. <laughs> yeah. There um, are a lot of news articles referencing that. And I'm really, I'm so happy, you know, as a company, they've been really yeah. very supportive and I was happy to see that. So with that, were they able to also um, more effectively be able to measure the effect and kind of the spread as well? Yeah, it took um, it took them a little time to dig that data. Um, it took them about a week. I didn't mind though because it gave me another news bite at the Apple um, so because we you know just managed to dominate the stories that week. Um, but it took them another week, and then you know a couple of subsequent months later, they produced even more data. And then I think um, as a result of um, the 2015 work that they did, I mean it was something crazy. Even more people, like 26 million people. Uh, participated, which was amazing, right? Like our lives are intertwined with digital and it's so evident um, that um, in cases like this, I mean, just sort of the widespread of how digital has just changed so many conversations. Absolutely. I mean, I, it's just the amazing spread that comes along with being so interconnected through digital now. Uh, you know, it's just a wonderful thing. Yeah, I think, um, you know, I, it's just, it's fascinating to me that, um, that and, and also affirming because I think the work, you know, as a champion for digital, um, you know, it's nice to have something pay off big like that, but that's the kind of thing that we try to do every day, not have something go viral, but to really have those conversations. And, you know, it's a bonus when it goes viral, like no doubt, I'll take it. But um, those are the kind of conversations and helping to drive those conversations that that we want to have and be a part of. And so um, it was, you know, exciting. And I hope it certainly 
for me, um, in the work that I do really demonstrated that digital can it digital matters and it can make change. But I think for so many other people, they were able to point to that and say like, yes, like if we're not doing this, we need to be doing it. Um, which you've certainly seen um, over the course of the past couple of years. Very cool. Um, so when you are not taking over all of Facebook, um, <laughs> what does a day in, in your shoes look like over there? So I work on everything from, um, you know, running our digital and social strategy to creating videos to, um, you know, our general marketing strategies overall, whether it's building relationships with um, influencers or, um, you know, coming up with a new campaign to sort of move the needle on an issue. I mean, it's very, it's varied. Um, every day is really different. But I think one of the things that I value so much about the human rights campaign is that they've just given me so much freedom and encouragement to be creative. And that I think has really kept me energized and inspired about the work that I do to be trying things that are different. So, you know, I want to do a video, you know, I, I wanted to do a video on, um, you know, transgender moms supporting their kids and how that can shape the conversation on trans issues um, post Caitlyn Jenner. And so that was really exciting to, you know, feature these great moms or, um, you know, coming up with like, how do we engage better with some of the YouTube celebrities who are LGBT and how do we get them to engage in our issues? Um, there's a lot of freedom for that. And, uh, you know, I think that's part of being, um, you know, not only passionate about the work, but passionate about the way that you can do the work um, that I've really enjoyed. So every day is different and I'm, I'm, I'm pretty grateful for that. Yeah, absolutely. And I think realistically, if you're in a marketing centric role or digital centric role and somehow uh, each day is kind of routine and so <laughs> forth, something's probably not right. Totally agree, totally yeah. agree. So, you know, looking, um, I guess, into your past uh, before, you know, Greenpeace uh, and where you are at now, you know, did you always want to get involved in human rights and, you know, looking you know, past that towards equality? Is that something that was always a passion? Yeah. Um, so I, um, you know, I always, I, I always knew I wanted to do work that did good. And I think, you know, Washington, for me, it was the place to do that. I, I, I think sometimes it gets a bad rap, but I find that the people that come here are very idealistic about wanting to change the world. And I think that's a good thing. Um, and so for me, I, I knew I didn't want to necessarily work in government. I felt that that wasn't really um, <laughs> my interest. I sort of wanted to work to change things. And I felt like you could do that better um, on the other side. And so uh, I, I think that was my main driving force. And when I um, was fortunate enough to get the door, uh, get my foot in the door at Greenpeace, I mean, that had always been a real passion of mine. Mm -hmm. And um, I felt always very inspired and very in sync with the way that they did their work. And so um, I, I got lucky and I worked really hard um, and um, learned a lot while I was there. So it wasn't that necessarily I, I set out to work in Mm -hmm. you know, uh, um, I set out to work in a nonprofit. That was sort of my only goal for issues that I really cared about. Sure. Um, but from a communications perspective, I feel like it sort of chose me. I mean, I didn't know that that was sort of a career necessarily. I just knew I wanted to contribute and work on good issues. And mm -hmm. I think um, I just love being able to be creative and, and that communications really allows you to do that. Very cool. So prior to college, did you have a dream job kind of going into things that, or did it, was there like a seed that kind of planted in your mind for where all this really came from? Well, I think, you know, I can't believe I'm admitting this, but I actually really wanted to get into law and um, everyone was like, don't do it. Like, <laughs> you're not going to make change there. But I felt really inspired by that. Hmm. I have to say that, um, you know, I went to Catholic school my entire life. Um, and I think uh, I'll never forget when our school in high school um, was giving people the day off to go for a pro-life rally. And I was adamantly pro-choice, which was not sort of um, welcomed um, at the time. And that really, it sort of, I felt very much um, that I didn't want 
I wanted to work against the grain and make sure that I had a very strong sense of justice. And I think um, that was part my schooling, part my parents that really encouraged us to to um, think for ourselves. Um, but I I I never said, you know, I wanted to grow up and, and be in marketing. I always just felt that I wanted to work for organizations that I felt personally inspired by. Um, and there are no shortage of them, um, fortunately, in this world. So. Um, I feel lucky to be able to work for two of them that I, I really appreciate and admire. It's very interesting. Um, actually, let me uh, check, make sure we don't have any questions. Again, for the folks who are watching, feel free to use the hashtag DDFire or use the system on Blab, and we will be happy to uh, get to your questions as well. Um, you know, as someone who works with a lot of role models and, you know, uh, you develop a lot of partnerships with these people who really, um, I guess, put on a very positive and um, forward thinking mentality towards equality. Um, who do you think are some of, I guess, the best role models that you would encourage people to look at as examples of equality and people that, I guess, yeah, let's go with that. Uh, who do you think are some of the best role models and forward thinking individuals that people should look towards uh, in the equality uh, world? Well, I have a couple that I look to myself. Um, so I've, I'm very inspired by um, all the marriage equality plaintiffs, um, particularly Jim Obergefell, who was the named plaintiff in the case um, that won marriage equality um, across the country. I just, his story about just being an everyday person and being inspired to change, I feel um, it's just a beautiful, beautiful story about love and about how one person um, along with many other people can really make a difference. So I'm just, I'm a huge fan of his, um, you know, personally and professionally. Mm -hmm. um, I also have to say, you know, I've been following um, many of the um, Black Lives Matters folks on Twitter and, and certainly, um, you know, watching the success that they've had about shaping a dialogue and it, mm -hmm. um, across this country. Um, I, you know, I'm really excited um, to see the Baltimore mayoral race with DeRay McKesson. Um, I follow him closely and just a big fan of his. And, um, you know, again, you know, using digital and social media to help shape those conversations. Mm -hmm. um, and I have to say, like, I'm, I'm consistently inspired by George Takei. I mean, he, um, is a good friend in the organization. And I worked with him um, when he decided to come out publicly um, as gay and along with his partner and a husband, Brad. And um, he has just really, um, you know, he's just an internet guru in himself. And I have a lot of respect for someone sort of re imagining their life and their career midlife. I mean, I find that very inspiring and how he's really been able to um, not only be a role model for the LGBT community, but I think in general progressive issues. And I, um, I'm, I'm just a big fan of his and he really, um, you know, he's such a, a generous and compassionate man. And I think that that translates um, across, you know, he is who he is on digital. And I think that that really connects and translates for people. So those are a couple of people that I, you know, I sort of follow and, and look to. And, um, you know, there are so many others. Um, I was just on the steps of the Supreme Court um, supporting the women's groups who were challenging um some of the trap laws in um, in Texas, um, and uh, you know Elise Hogue at NARAL, Cecile Richards at Planned Parenthood, Amy Hagstrom Miller, um, the CEO of Whole Women's Health. I mean, they're just amazing what they're doing um, daily on the front lines of that battle. So there's no shortage, I think, of of really incredible people doing great work that I personally look to to feel inspired. Absolutely. So it looks like we have a question actually relevant to this. Um, you know, I guess in this conversation, obviously, there are many different viewpoints, um, some a bit more hostile and also some very misdirected. How do you all currently support and kind of help out people that are facing a lot of negativity, whether it be through, you know, digital mediums or platforms or you know, in real life as well? Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I often say that just because 
marriage equality was the law of the land doesn't mean that homophobia is outlawed, right? Like, you know, hate still exists, prejudice still exists. And um, it's, 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 I think makes the work that we do and so many other people do that much more urgent because you know that it's actually affecting real people's lives. Um, so, you know, from that perspective, I think, you know, our role is to help change institutions and policies um, mm -hmm. to create a more fair and equal future. So, um, you know, every time that we're sort of chipping away at the establishment, so whether that's um, corporations, um, hospitals, government, you know, poli calling politicians out to sort of change the way that they talk about things. Yeah. That's about shaping culture. Um, and I think that that's really um, one of our strengths as an organization is that, you know, helping to direct that narrative so that you are sort of, you know, doing it. And we do it in sort of small, minuscule ways. Right. Um, but those but those things add up, I think, on digital. Um, there is the power of a real a real time conversation. And I think um, most recently um, we saw a bill in South Dakota that was targeting um, transgender students um, mm -hmm. that passed through the legislature and then went to the South, um, the governor. Um, he we called on him very strongly in very public ways to veto that, because I think, you know, when you have when you're a young person or any person, really, but you have your entire community from the top down sort of um, disavowing who you are and disrespecting that, I think it really sends a very strong and clear message. And so, you know, while we try to shape all of that, um, we really try to start with, you know, at the very top um, of who can really make a difference. And in this case, it was the governor who did veto this bill um, and um, was an incredible victory for South Dakota. But I think it's, you know, at all levels trying to shape the conversation. Um, and, you know, sometimes you sort of have to go with the most urgent need, but, you know, we work across the platform. And I think for us, um, we felt really, you um, buoyed by the fact that um, that he heard us and um, was willing and heard so many other people and met with trans people um, and was willing to um, really take a step back and reflect upon that. And, um, you know, that's those victories don't always happen. You know, they're, you know, few, you know, sometimes for a long time, few and far between. But I think it sets a real precedent for how, you know, over a short period of time, you work to change conversations that change all of those pieces in a society. Mm -hmm. That was long. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, I, I think that was good. And in fact, it looks like you uh, uh, definitely piqued someone's interest and got into the political world. So we have uh, another question on that topic. Um, so, unfortunately, I have to ask the unavoidable related uh, question relating to politics. Mm -hmm. Would you vote for Frank Underwood? <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to say, I'm super excited about House of Cards um, <laughs> that started today. He's, mm -hmm. uh, you know, anyway, I love that show um, and love, um, love that. But, you know, politics is certainly, I think they couldn't pick a better time. And yeah. I have to say, House of Cards digital rollout was fantastic. They did a really smart site and all of that. Absolutely. Um, so back to kind of reality and uh, jokes aside, but, um, you know, with the current uh, political race absolutely just on fire right now, um, there's a lot of, you know, additional churning of the waters. Mm -hmm. How has that affected what you all are doing? You know, um, I have to say, um, you know, we are um, fully invested in um, ensuring that, um, you know, the gains that we have made under President Obama, which have been significant, um, everything from his executive orders to signing of the repeal of Don't Ask, Don't Tell to passing um, hate crimes legislation and certainly his support of marriage equality. Um, I so many things are on the line, um, not just for our community, but so many others. Um, it's I have to say, um, I don't know if you watch the Republican um, have been watching that and following that. It's it's just it's frightening um, what could certainly happen and um, sort of the um, you know, not just our community, but uh, we've certainly seen it with others, like the attacks that they're sort of willing to go to and, you know, 
things that they're willing to say, um, it's it's really something. Um, I have to say that I sort of watch this from a, a perspective. My my husband is Canadian, and so I'm always like, well, we could go back. Um, <laughs> But this is the time where he and I both agree that, you know, that we need to stay and fight. And mm -hmm. you know, these are the values that, you know, we believe in. And certainly when we saw all the historic um, decision on marriage equality, mm -hmm. those are the values of Americans, right? Um, you know, overwhelmingly Americans support that issue. And so um, our role is to make sure that we bring these issues to light, to call um, those out. Um, on um, our opposition who have said some terrible derogatory things about the community and to make sure that they're being held accountable for that. Um, I, I really, um, you know, I have a, a child. I, I, I think about the world that I want to create for him. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, many of the values espoused by the Republicans are, are not those that I necessarily share myself. And I'm hoping that um, America will agree. Absolutely. And I think actually that's an interesting point you made. You know, a lot of my friends maybe on Facebook or wherever will mention moving and escaping to Canada. If <laughs> certain, um, individual with bad hair, maybe a toupee and becomes president. But, um, you know, to what you said, I think staying and fighting actually makes a lot more sense. And obviously, you know, why leave behind when, you know, we can make sure individuals who um, put, things backwards should not be uh, kind of in a position of power. I, you know, I think it's, you know, it's sort of funny to think about. And I think the Canadians have been really creative with um, a couple of their tourism campaigns that we've seen recently. I also saw, I don't know if you read this, but um, after the most recent Republican debate, the Embassy of Canada's website actually crashed, which I thought was hilarious if that's true, right? Yikes. Um, but I do, you know, I do think that, you know, there are just so many issues for so many people that are going to be on the line that um, I, you know, um, my husband recently became an American citizen and um, we just sort of don't want to let it go backwards. And um, I, I'm hoping that so many other people feel the same, too. Yeah. So according to my colleague, Carmen, it did, in fact, crash this. Ah! So <laughs> That's <yes>. crazy. <laughs> That's a really great story. <laughs> That's great. So I think we have, <laughs> yep, she, she always does her research. Oh, um, I love it. <laughs> yeah. um, so we have time for one more question um, away from kind of politics and, you know, with South by Southwest, just kind of around the corner. Uh, emerging platforms are always kind of a big thing for organizations. You know, you all hit one of the most viral campaigns. So obviously you are very in tune with, you know, at least, you know, you are in tune with the um, current platforms. But uh, each year, typically, we'll see some sort of emergence. You know, last year was like Periscope, Americat. Um, what do you think, I guess, either be it a theme or a particular platform do you see becoming like the next communication tool for this year? Um, you know, it's um, it's funny. I'm um, I my sense is that um, Snapchat. I'm I'm all about Snapchat right now. I'm really pushing our organization forward to embrace that more, um, to be using it more um, around uh, the election. I think Pete Hamby is doing amazing things on Snapchat with their political coverage. Um, so I I really am interested in sort of seeing where that platform goes and certainly what we can do with it. Um, I think that South by Southwest, though, last year is a good lesson for all of us because there was so much buzz about Meerkat. And two weeks post the event, I mean, it was like, I thought, you know, just done, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so I do think there's a um, like, sometimes we all want to jump in and I'm guilty of this myself and sort of seeing like, well, let's try it. And I'm, I'm all about experimenting it and sort of seeing what you can do with something new. But I also think, you know, it takes time and effort to invest in something. And particularly as a nonprofit, we don't have a ton of internal resources um, and people power to do that. So I'm, I'm, I'm doubling down on Snapchat. I'm excited to see what comes out of South by and, um, you know, going to give it a couple weeks to, to recalibrate and see, you know, what the latest and greatest thing is. Absolutely. And, you know, honestly, I'm just ready to try out that geofencing on Snapchat. That seems like <laughs> a really cool thing. And it's really reasonably priced as far oh, as like a marketing God. standpoint. 
it's really, I mean, I find that to be really smart, right? Um, yeah. I think, uh, well, I knew that the tipping point though is when my nephew asked me to send him money for, at he's at school uh, on Snapchat and I was yeah. like, oh God. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Um, but yeah, I, I felt like that was something that we really wanted to invest in, specifically reaching a younger audience. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm all about it. Very cool. You know, so I think we're just at about time. But um, you know, I encourage folks to follow Anastasia on Twitter. Um, I will be tweeting out her account and also a video that kind of digs more into that incredibly amazing viral campaign that came out. Um, but, you know, I just wanted to thank you and I really appreciate your time and joining us and we will be uh, putting this recording out there for others to enjoy. Great. Well, thank you so much, Elliot. It was such a pleasure to speak with you today. I really appreciate the opportunity. You as well. Thank you so much and uh, have a great weekend. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>